I have some important questions for my family and friends. If you were given one month to leave, what will you change in the way you live today? What will you do differently? Friends, what is taking the most of your attention, time, talent, and treasure now? Have you ever stopped to consider the eternal value of your life pursuits? How should we think about our pursuit? Think of it this way. What you admire or desire today, does it give your life meaning now? And if it does, will it still have meaning in eternity? In other words, whatever you pursue today, will it get better for you when you die or worse? When you die, will those things still be important or will they become worthless to you after you die? And speaking of dying, there are many people alive today who act as though there is no afterlife. But deep inside of them, they know that there is something beyond the grave. This knowledge manifests itself in different ways among people. Let me give you some instances. There are a lot of people today with dead relatives, and somehow they imagine them to be living. And you often hear people say things like, if my mom or dad is watching now, and by that, they are referring to their dead parents. Some still go to the grave to have conversation or to leave flowers for their dead loved ones. There are those who claim to speak to the dead. Some will even try to cheer up the bereaved by telling them that their dead relative has transformed into an angel. And for others, dead relatives become objects of religious worship. I personally grew up in a culture where the people make sacrifices to their dead parents and grandparents. The point is that the knowledge of the afterlife is burnt into all of us. And that is good because there is life after death, which is exactly why we are having this conversation. So I will ask you, what are you doing about the afterlife? Have you ever thought about where you will go when you die? I hope you no longer attempt to convince yourself that there is nothing beyond the grave because there is. Regardless of what science or the culture tries to teach, we are made to exist forever. When a person dies, only the body dies. The real you lives on. So where do the dead go? The Bible speaks of only two possible destinations, heaven or hell. Both the old and the New Testaments of the Bible make this point crystal clear. For instance, in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, in verse 2, the Bible says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, speaking of those who are dead, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. In the New Testament, we have John chapter 5, verse 28, says, Marvel not at this. Don't be surprised. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, still speaking of those who are dead, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Which of these two will you experience? The resurrection of life or the resurrection of damnation? Friends, it all depends on what you do with Jesus Christ, whether you receive him as your Savior and Lord or not. The greatest good that you need to do in this life is to believe or trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sin. This is the only way to salvation and eternity with God. Your sins have separated you from God and made you his enemy. But by his sacrifice on your behalf, 
Jesus Christ brought reconciliation between you and God. And when you admit your sins and trust in what Christ did for you, you will be saved. And that salvation is the only thing that guarantees you the resurrection of life. Apart from Christ, all men will face the wrath of God on the last day. But those who receive him are redeemed and saved from wrath. John chapter 3 verse 18, Jesus says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So believe today and be saved. And for you who have received Christ and claim to be his follower, what are you living for? Is it Christ or other things? Is it Christ alone or Christ plus a few other things that you think will make you happy and complete in this life? In Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, we read about a man called the Apostle Paul. Here is what he says, his own testimony. He says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. What about your testimony? Can you say the same? Here's what you need to know about this life. If you live for anything or anyone other than Christ, the result for you when you die is loss. This is not a condemnation of having dreams or desires in this life, as long as those dreams and desires are not sinful. But those things that you desire to have or to do must be for the purpose of living for and honoring Christ, not just for your temporary comfort in this life. And having said all that, let me now return to the question with which I started. If you were given one month to leave, what will you begin to do differently? How will you change your choices today? Now may be the time to begin making those changes. No one is promised tomorrow. We only have this moment. So make the best of it for Christ and for your eternal gain. Thank you for watching. Until next time, grace and peace be with you in Jesus' name. Amen.